In 1996, a deadly virus spreads through the world and wipes out almost all of humanity. It's believed that a group known as the 12 Monkeys is behind this. Years later in 2035, survivors live underground while animals wander the earth. In an airport, young James watches a man getting shot to death as a blonde woman rushes to his side. However this is just a dream and adult James wakes in a prison in 2035 when he hears the warden yell his name. In the neighboring cell Jose informs James that he's been chosen to go outside. Rumors say that those that get chosen get a pardon. James is taken to another room where he puts on a hazmat suit and grabs a suitcase. Then he enters a corridor that disinfects him before opening the door so James can go up in the elevator. After following the underground tunnels, James appears on the surface, which is covered in snow. He starts collecting any bugs he can catch and puts them in a jar. A bear suddenly startles him with a roar, but it quickly goes away. James looks around for bugs for a while, ignoring bigger things like birds and lions. Under some snow, he finds a sign with a 12 and a monkey in red, and underneath it says we did it. Moments later James is back underground and given a thorough wash plus an injection. Then he's taken to see the scientists, who lead the remaining survivors. After getting his barcode scanned and a reminder of his crimes, he's tied to a chair. Since James has great memory and observation skills, they want him to go back in time and find samples they can use to create a vaccine. If he's successful, they'll reduce his sentence and help humanity return to the surface. In 1990 in Philadelphia, psychiatrist Catherine is called to the police station, where she learns about a mentally unstable man they just arrested, who took on five cops and doesn't show up in any database. When she gets to the cell she finds Jamie chained to the floor. Between the time trip and the beat up his mind isn't exactly clear right now, so he tries his best to explain he needs to gather information for an emergency. When he mentions 1996, Catherine corrects him and says it's 1990, meaning the time machine failed. After Catherine confirms James is mentally ill, he's taken to an asylum where he gets another thorough wash. Then a guard introduces James to a patient named Jeffrey, asking him to give him a tour. As Jeffrey shows James around, he keeps on ranting against the system, corporations, and how humans are destroying the planet. Later James is taken to see the psychiatrists and snaps every time the guards try to grab him. He tells them everything about the virus and the 12 monkeys, explaining that he can't change things now because it's already happened but instead he'll help the people in the future. The doctors obviously don't believe him, so James says he can prove it with a phone call. However when he tries the number that the scientists gave him, it's picked up by a normal house and he realizes that since this is 1990 that number doesn't connect to the proper answer machine yet. That night, James dreams about the airport again. He wakes up in the middle of the night and looks out the window, only for Jeffrey to explain it's impossible to open it. While Jeffrey starts another crazy rant, James finds a spider and eats it, hoping it'll still be a sample. Jeffrey admits that he knows a way out, he won't use it because his rich father will come for him soon. Suddenly Jeffrey starts screaming, lowering his pants to show his rear to the guards when they come to calm him down. He starts destroying pillows and gets taken away. The next day, Jeffrey and James watch a news story about scientists operating on animals. They both find it cruel and James says that maybe humanity deserves to be destroyed after all. Jeffrey is shocked but absolutely loves the idea. At that moment James is given some medicine and soon he falls into a very passive, barely responsive state. Later Jeffrey shows up with a key he stole from a guard and puts it in James' hand. Then he starts yelling and breaking things to create a distraction, inspiring other patients to act out as well. James is still in a dazed state so Jeffrey pushes him off his chair to make him react. Moving very slowly and constantly falling, James makes it to the door and opens it to leave the main area. He crosses a corridor and finds a guard who happens to be the prison warden in the future. The front door is locked so the guard tells him to take the elevator, not caring about his escape. After taking the elevator, James accidentally triggers an alarm and the guards immediately come for him. They quickly surround him and James struggles against their hold, managing to hit a few men before being captured. Then James is tied to a stretcher and left in an isolated room. Afterward Catherine explains to the other doctors that she has a strange feeling about James, as if she knew him from somewhere. Their talk is interrupted by a guard, who takes them to the isolated room. James has completely disappeared, which is impossible because the room only has a locked door and no other exits. The airport dream haunts James again, and this time he sees a man with Jeffrey's face and a briefcase running away. Suddenly he wakes up alone in a room in 2035. He can hear a man with a raspy voice talking nonsense to him, saying that he may be in the next cell or just a figment of his imagination. Soon James is taken to the scientists, who play a distorted recording of someone talking about the location the 12 monkeys. James explains he didn't send that message because he was sent to the wrong year and shares what happened. The scientists show him a bunch of old pictures and James recognizes Jeffrey in the 12 monkey crowd. Then they ask him if he wants to try again. Soon James is set up in the time machine, which requires tons of wires and extra calculations to do it right this time. Unfortunately James shows up in the middle of a battle in World War I. As bodies fall all over the area, the French soldiers interrogate him at gunpoint, but James doesn't speak French. At that moment a bomb goes off and the soldiers bring a wounded soldier who turns out to be Jose. 
As a soldier takes a picture, James crawls to his friend, only to suddenly be shot in the leg. As he cries out in pain, another time jump is triggered. In 1996, Catherine is giving a presentation on madness and apocalyptic visions. One of her example includes a soldier from World War I who spoke nonsense about some disease that would wipe out humanity. The guy just disappeared in the middle of the war and the picture she uses looks like Jose. After the lecture, Catherine signs her book for the crowd and is approached by Dr. Peters, who thinks alarmists are the same ones and humanity's destruction of the environment is the real lunacy. Afterward Catherine walks to her car and is jumped on by a mysterious man, who shakes her before getting in the car with her. He claims to have a gun and forces her to take him to Philadelphia, explaining that he doesn't know how to drive because he's lived underground since he was eight. Catherine realizes the guy is James, who apologizes for the attack and claims he needs her help. During the trip, James is excited to breathe fresh air and hear good music on the radio. They also hear about a kid that fell in an abandoned well shaft, but James isn't moved because he remembers this. He claims it was all a prank and the kid is hiding in a barn. Sometime later the police are told by Catherine's friends that she disappeared and they search her apartment, where they find a message in her machine. A colleague from the mental hospital warns her that James is back and looking for her. Meanwhile James and Catherine are resting at a hotel. James dreams about the airport again and this time he sees Catherine as the blonde woman. When he wakes up, he tells Catherine about it while still keeping her tied up. Then he takes her money and goes to a vending machine for some snacks. When he comes back he sees on TV that he's a wanted man for kidnapping Catherine. The duo immediately returns to the road and James reviews his notes on the 12 monkeys, explaining they have the original virus. Eventually they make it to Philadelphia and drive around the city until James sees something. He runs to a wall and finds the 12 monkeys graffiti. Catherine considers using the chance to escape, but instead chooses to follow him to help him, still thinking he's crazy. James begins following the graffiti on the wall while dragging Catherine with him, and they freeze when a hobo with a raspy voice tells them nobody can hide because they are tracking them, thanks to devices hidden in the teeth. This is why he removed his own. They ignore him and keep following the graffiti, entering an abandoned theater. The place has become a hideout for the homeless and two crazy men immediately attack them. James is hit by an armed guy a couple of times so he pretends to beg and be weak to come closer and punch the man in the groin. Then he overpowers the guy and smashes his head against the wall before going after the other one, tackling him before he can take advantage of Catherine. With vicious fury, James punches and kicks the man to death. After taking the hobo's gun, the duo runs out of the building and James recognizes a pig statue from the picture shown by the scientists. This is the headquarters of the FAA or Freedom for Animals Association. They go inside and James asks the group about the 12 monkeys, threatening them with his gun. They admit they used to work with Jeffrey but they parted ways with him when he became an extremist in favor of guerrilla tactics. Jeffrey formed a new group called the 12 monkeys after that. His father Leland is a famous virologist who experiments on animals and James finds a picture of him after tying the group up. A newspaper article shows the time Jeffrey let 100 snakes loose in the Senate. However after lots of fighting, one day Jeffrey suddenly said he regretted everything and started to support his father's experiments. After stealing an address book from the FAA, James forces Catherine to drive him to Leland's mansion in a stolen car. James is still in pain because of his leg and when Catherine notices, she stops the car to steal some supplies from a nearby house. Then she takes care of the wound, removing the bullet in the process. James apologizes before grabbing her with extra strength. Moments later, James makes it to the mansion and hides under a car to avoid people. When he comes out, he accidentally drops the gun. In the house, Leland is giving a speech for his dinner guests while Jeffrey pretends to be a well-behaved son yet he's asleep. A guard suddenly wakes him up to tell him they found a strange man who claims to know him. Jeffrey goes to take a look and pretends he doesn't know James, but he quickly changes his mind when James mentions 12 monkeys. As Jeffrey takes James to another room for privacy, James keeps asking for a virus sample. Jeffrey thinks he wants to spread it to destroy humanity like he had said back in the asylum and a furious James attacks him, holding him over the edge of the railing. The guards immediately come to stop him and James begins fighting them while Jeffrey goes on another yelling rant against the system. James exchanges a few hits with the guards and jumps over the railing, freaking all the fancy guests out when he lands. He immediately runs away and the guards try following him, startling everyone in the kitchen. However James is already gone. Later in the woods, James lets Catherine out of the trunk and she attacks him in frustration, but she isn't strong enough to hurt him. At that moment they hear the police coming and Catherine begins honking the horn to get their attention. James dances in the pond, saying he loves being outside in the fresh air only to suddenly disappear. In the morning, Catherine returns home after being interrogated. She hears on the news that the lost kid was found in a barn because it was all a prank, just like James said. In 2035, James wakes up and finds the scientists singing a song for him with a beautiful painting behind them. Since James has found the origin of the virus, he's presented with an official pardon and a promise he can leave as soon as he's feeling better. It's all too weird and James snaps, saying they're not real. Then he starts laughing and reaches the conclusion he's insane, so they inject him a sedative. 
Moments later he wakes up and hears the man with the raspy voice, who tells James that his real wish is to see the sky, the ocean, and to be with her. James wonders if the voice is in his head and if this is the guy with no teeth he saw before. In 1996, Catherine has trouble sleeping. One morning she gets a call from the detective, who explains the bullet from James' wound has been analyzed. The ballistic reports indicate it was fired sometime before 1920. Freaking out, Catherine hangs up and rushes to check her research. She finds the picture of the crazy guy from World War I and finds James next to Jose. Believing James' story now, Catherine calls Leland to tell him his son will steal the virus, but he promises his security is tight. After hanging up Leland asks his assistant Peters to upgrade their security measures anyway. Back to James, he tries to convince the scientist to send him back to 1996, promising his outburst in bed had been a result of feeling sick and that he's better now. The scientists give him a pop quiz about the virus, making him list all the locations the virus first appeared at in the right order. James passes it without issues and notices some pictures of graffiti at the FAA building, which wasn't there when he visited. Meanwhile Catherine is outside the FAA shouting for them to let her in. The group ignores her while revealing Jeffrey is working with them and they lied to James. At that moment a hobo with raspy voices warns her that the police are watching, and Catherine thinks this is the guy James often heard. However when she asks, the man gets scared and runs away. Getting desperate, Catherine begins painting the graffiti James saw on the picture. At that moment James shows up and tells Catherine he wants to surrender to the police because he's accepted he's crazy. Catherine drags him away but it's too late, the cop has seen them. Fortunately they cross the street and another vehicle blocks the police car, allowing them to escape. Moments later the duo makes it to a hotel and Catherine pays for only a few hours. The receptionist thinks she's a naughty worker and after they leave for their room, he calls the guy in charge of this neighborhood's dirty business. In the room, Catherine shows James the picture and tries to convince him it's all real. However James doesn't care, he just wants to have a normal life here with her. As Catherine hugs him to comfort him, a guy suddenly bursts into the room and accuses her of working in his territory. She tries to explain but the guy punches her before taking out a knife and grabbing her by the hair. James finally reacts and grabs a phone to start beating him up with it. Terrified, Catherine begs him not to kill him, so James locks the guy up in the bathroom. Catherine worries because she hears screaming, but the door opens and James reveals he removed his teeth like the hobo said. By the time the police arrive, the duo has already escaped through the window. After Catherine also removes her teeth, she and James take a bus downtown. She uses a payphone to call the number James tried back in 1990 and gets excited when she says a carpet cleaning company picked up. She thinks the virus outbreak may be something in James' head after all, but when she starts reciting the message she left in the machine, James finishes it for her. It's the recording the scientists had played for him, meaning it's all real. At that moment they're caught on screen by a shop's cameras, so they run inside to buy disguises. As James looks around, he realizes this is the building he took the bugs from. In the evening, the 12 monkeys are in a bus with a person they just kidnapped, who turns out to be Leland. The doctor tells Jeffrey he knows about his plan so he made arrangements to protect the virus. Jeffrey says it's too late and the group starts making monkey noises. Eventually they make it to the zoo. Meanwhile James and Catherine are hiding in a theater while she glues a fake mustache and wig on him. James falls asleep during the movie and dreams of the airport again. When he wakes up, Catherine is gone, but he quickly finds her coming out of the bathroom. Her new look matches his dream perfectly. They hug and share a kiss. In the morning the city wakes up to discover the zoo animals are loose all over the place. The duo takes a cab to the airport intending to leave the country and the driver explains traffic is worse than usual because the 12 monkeys incident. It turns out it was them who released the animals. They see some giraffes running around and James and Catherine are relieved to see this is the only plan Jeffrey had. It also explains that we did it written on the walls. At the airport, the cops are giving copies of James' picture to all the employees. When the duo arrives, James realizes this is the place from his dreams. Catherine goes to pick up the tickets while James uses a payphone to send another message to the scientists, telling them it wasn't 12 monkeys who released the virus and that he doesn't want to go back. At the front desk, the man with the suitcase from the dream is getting a ticket for all the locations in James' virus list. Afterward James goes to the bathroom to fix his mustache and the man with the raspy voice talks from a stall, saying James isn't allowed to stay. James yells that he's already done his job, but when he opens the stall it's just a terrified businessman. On his way out, James is found by Jose, who confirms the scientist got the new message. He tries giving James a gun, but he turns it down. Jose admits his mission is to shoot Catherine if James doesn't cooperate and James starts choking him, but he calms down and takes the gun after all. Meanwhile young James is arriving with his family. At the newsstand, Catherine bumps into briefcase guy, who turns out to be Peters. After he walks away, Catherine looks at the newspaper and sees his picture next to Leland. She runs to find James and tells him about Peters, so they start searching for him. At that moment Peters is stopped by airport security, who asks to see the contests of the suitcase. Peters opens a vial to prove it's empty, but he's actually starting to spread the virus. 
Catherine and James try to push their way through the security line and the employee stops them, so an argument ensues. A cop sees James and tries to arrest him, but James punches him and runs through the metal detector while pushing the guard. While Catherine blocks the way to buy him time, young James watches the whole scene. Old James pulls out his gun to stop Peters, but before he can fire, the police shoot him down. Peters gets to enter the plane and Catherine runs to James' dying body, confirming young James has seen his own death. Catherine barely gets to grieve before the police takes her away. In the plane, Peters chit-chats with the other passengers, who turn out to be the scientists from the future. In the parking lot, a young James watches the airplane take off, 